Hi, so many of us heard for reflection, uh, whether we are coming from Java programming language community or from some other communities, but uh, not a lot of us actually saw uh, reflection in action. So in this small video I'm going to make, uh, I'll show you how practical side of reflection and give you a small insight how object relational mappers work. So here in my IntelliJ IDEA ID, I create a new project called Java Reflection in Action and also I added this MySQL connector dependence. So let's start with creating of new class. And I'll call my class user for instance. So, um, we'll try to map this user module class to our MySQL database by using reflection. So, we will use JDBC uh, statements, but we'll use reflection to build our create table query. Okay. So, here in user class, I'll create two, three fields private int ID private string, uh, username, and private string password. Okay. And we don't even need getters and setters, so we'll just leave it like this. Now let's create a new generic class called DAO. And it will take only one type, T. Okay. Also, let's define three fields three variables, private string, uh, db URL. These will be parameters for our database. String user private string password. Okay. And let's also insert constructor. Good. And let's insert generate uh, insert getters and setters. And first thing I'm going to do, I'll create a method which uh, returns connection to our MySQL database. And I'll call it public connection. Okay, connection from Java SQL. Good. And it will be get connection. Okay. Now let's create variable connection and let's initialize that variable. Let's return connection, but before that I'll create try catch. I'll catch exception E in case of exception, and I'll print stack trace. Print stack trace, okay. And here I'm going to say connection equals driver manager get connection, and I'll pass these three these three variables. Okay, that's it. Now let's create a method which uh, takes while well, string SQL statement and execute it. Okay, that will be method which will execute our create table statement. Okay, and scope will be private void. Uh, create table jdbc that will be name for example and it will have single parameter string query okay let's also create connection variable let's initialize that variable and let's also create statement variable no not from java beans statement from java sql Statement. Uh, let's initialize statement too. And let's also create try catch and stack trace and also finally block where we are going to close our connection statement. And here I'll say connection equals to get connection and statement equals to connection create statement and statement equals execute 
and I'll pass query. Okay. And then finally block I'll close statement. And I'll say statement is not equal null. Good. I'll say statement close. Close. Okay. And surround it with catch. Let's copy this and fix everything to connection. So this will be connection. Connection. Good. And now I'll create a method with where our reflection magic happens. So I'll say like this public void create table. That will be name of our method. And it will take class object as an argument, type of t, and name of that parameter will be class. Okay, so basically I'll try to build create table query, create table statement like this, which will look like this. It, it will say create table, uh, for instance, user. Uh, first column will be id int 11 and it will be primary key. Second column will be username var care 255 and third column will be password var care 255. Excellent. Let's start with the building of our create table query, create table statement. And I'll create string builder called string builder equals new string builder. Good. And first thing I'll append this. Okay. Append, append this. Also, don't forget this blank space. Now I have to determine name of my table, and we'll use a reflection for that. And I'll say string builder append. And I'll say class dot get simple name. And also let's say to lowercase. Okay. Now let's also append this blank space and open bracket. Good. And now we have to find way how to create names for our columns and how to read this, these data types. So I'll create a for each loop and I'll say for field field and you'll import field from Java Lang reflect. Okay. And I'll say for field in class dot get declared fields. By calling get declared fields, we are returning all fields, not just public fields, like in case if we call get fields method. Okay. So next thing is to determine name of my column. And I'll say uh, string builder append. And let's say field get name. Okay. That's name. Let's append blank space now. This blank space. And okay. And now we have to find way how to determine data type. For example, int 11 or var 255. So I'll have to create a simple filter for that. And I'll say if field get type get simple name equals int. This is because names or, well, generally data types in Java and MySQL are, are different. In this case, if we called field get type get simple name, it will return us int. So we don't actually need this if statement. But in case, for example, uh, of var here, if we call field get type get simple name, it will return us string and not var here. So in that case, MySQL will throw us an exception. Okay, so I'm going to put this 
small simple filter. And I'll say string builder append int the web. Okay. And if field get type get simple name equals string. Okay, in case of string fields, we have username and password. They are string fields. Okay, I'll say string builder append uh, bar here to 55. Good. And finally, let's add this comma. Comma. Good. Now let's step outside of our for each loop and let's finally build our query. Okay, before I pass this query to create table JDBC method, I'll echo it simply by calling system out print line. So I'll say string builder substring. So in this case, I'll have to remove uh, in last iteration, we will have comma. So I'll have to remove this comma before I echo my statement. And I'll do that by calling this substring method. And it will start from zero. And I'll say string builder to string uh, length minus one. So it will, re it will remove comma and we'll append closing bracket. Okay. So that should be it. Let's create our test class where we will test our create table method. And let's create main method. So let's instantiate our DAO class. The user will be type, name of this instance will be DAO, and new DAO user, and let's pass these parameters, JDBC, MySQL, L local host okay two slashes local host three three oh six databases test user is root password is one two three four okay and finally let's call this create table method and let's pass class object of our user class okay so let's run it now And as you can see, it echoed our, our real statement. Actually, there is this star. Okay, let's remove it. Now it should be fine. Okay, now it's fine, but there is a catch. The catch is we don't, we don't know what column is primary key. So we are missing primary key. And what to do? Well, we'll have to use annotations. So I'll create a new annotation called ID. So I'll mark field which is going to be primary key. And that's, let's say, runtime retention actually. Retention. Okay, and let's say retention policy runtime. This way we'll make our annotation visible for reflection. And let's say target. This way we'll specify type of our annotation, which will be uh, element type field annotation. Okay, and now I'll annotate my ID field, okay, with ID, but now in my DAO class I have to read that in some. So I'll create uh, in my for each loop, I'll say annotation, uh, INN ID equals class 
actually field. So this is field annotation. So I'll have to call field get annotation id dot class. Okay. And here, before I append this comma, I'll say if I then id is not equal null. I'll append space and primary key string. Let's see whether it works now. And as you can see, it works. The proof that I'm not lying, I'll try to annotate some other column. For example, username. And as you can see, username is now primary key column. Let's back this to private int id and let's finally try to map our Pojo class to database by passing our query, our statement to create table jdbc method. Okay, let's run it. Okay, there it is. So I expect table with name user with columns ID, which will be primary key, username, and password. I'll open my MySQL workbench, refresh my test database, and as you can see, there is a user table with ID, username, and password columns. So, I hope you got some small insight of how ORMs work and how reflection works in practice. Bye all. See ya.